Hi guys, my name is Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some more of my makes from the last quarter of 2020. So this one's going to be a whistle stop tour because I spoke to you about my Montrose makes last video and I'll be speaking to you about um, another pattern, the Made It Go Pants and Cami which was a pattern test that I loved and have made several of and will make several more. Um, but this is a whistle stop tour of some of my other makes of the last quarter of 2020. So be prepared for lots of pictures flashing up of makes and me running through things um, at rapid pace <laughs> because I have a fair few things to talk to you about more than I sort of thought when I was reflecting on the last quarter of 2020 um i in my head i was like oh i didn't really make very much because i was setting up a business and <laughs> dealing with a global pandemic um, and you know that's fine but actually when i started to look through instagram at my makes and um talk about think about like what i'd actually made it, it was more than yeah more than i thought so um we'll we'll whiz through now when i left you before i had my little two month break from YouTube. I um, filmed a vlog talking about some simple makes. Oh, excuse me. Um, some simple makes, some simple gathered skirts that I just wanted to have in my wardrobe. And actually a lot of my makes recently have been things that just I need in my wardrobe, like basics um, that just work with lots of things either because they're comfy and cozy which I've needed way more of in 2020 than I ever have or because they just kind of pattern wise or print wise go with lots of things so I'm going to talk to you first about four Tilly and the Buttons Frankie tops that I made now the Frankie top is a pattern that comes in the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book now <laughs> there's been a lot of conversation about Tilly and the Buttons and other sewing pattern companies recently over on Instagram about size range and how their size range is actually pretty <laughs> poor. Um, I am the largest, I measure the largest size in Tilly and the Buttons, size eight. A couple of their patterns go up to size 10. Um, although often I actually, in their stretch fabrics, I make a size seven. Um, but, you know, that's not actually a, a particularly inclusive size range and um when questioned about their intentions for increasing their size range their response was poor <laughs> i think that would be the summary i'm not going to go into huge details here i do want to talk a little bit about um body confidence and body sizing and body sizing it's not um clothes sizing um in another vlog i have been saying that for two years and i haven't managed to get one out yet but um yeah the the the, the summary of what i'm trying to say is these are actually the last tilly and the buttons frankie tops that i have made um i made them before this discussion about size range came out um and as i mentioned i think in my festive sewing plans blog i have i've bought the patterns for pirates slim fit raglan and um, which i've already made a couple of <laughs> I know, get me. We've been busy between Christmas and New Year. Um, and I'll talk to you a bit more about in another um, vlog of kind of a catch up on my festive sewing plans. But um, yeah, I just wanted to put that in there. That, And I think it's quite important actually that we recognise when we already have a pattern. Like it's fine to have a pattern and make it, um, but to recognise that if we're talking to people about it um, on the internet... <laughs> Um, that maybe we can like suggest another company that might sell something similar that is in a bigger size range or um, just recognise that that pattern might not be available to everybody. Um, yeah, so I made four. I actually made six because I made two for a friend. <laughs> um, but I made one with a cream body and polka dot um, sleeves uh, because I have a version which is black with a black and white polka dot sleeves that gets loads of wear so i thought a white one would be sensible one with a cream uh, body and a berg plain burgundy sleeve um both of those all of the fabrics from that were from um the maker's merchant who used to be luberty fabrics and i made 
a matching um, cream with burgundy sleeves version for my friend and um, we have a socially distanced photo of us posing with it um, and also I made her a black black with a camo print sleeve I also have two bodies of tops and two sleeves of tops that don't go together which means I'm making at least four more tops for her um, when <laughs> lockdown is over and we're able to see each other again um, which will be good so yes we made those for me they have been more like pj tops than outerwear but i will wear them as layers as well and um, they're just super useful to have a long sleeve top <laughs> it's really cold in my house at the minute my husband would disagree he's fine but i'm freezing a lot of the time so long sleeve clothes good and you'll notice a pattern um over the coming weeks of wanting to keep warm <laughs> with the makes that I'm making so um, there we go then I also decided to make two jumper versions or sweatshirt versions of the Tilly and the Buttons Frankie I made these around my birthday I bought some gorgeous uh, penguin print sort of Christmassy uh, penguin print French terry from Little Darling Fabrics it's been super popular this fabric and I really hope that Kerry brings it back next year um, because I think that you can kind of wear it at least all throughout winter I'm gonna wear it all year Um, I think one of the penguins has a Santa hat on but the others just kind of have like colorful jumpers and you know penguins exist all year it's fine Um, and then I also made um the same jumper in my cosmic lions jersey uh, sweatshirting was it sweatshirting or french terry i think it's french terry um from hustle and growl which i have had in my stash for quite a while not quite knowing what to make but the the benefit of the the frankie or any raglan um pattern is that you get a nice big space to um to showcase a big print um i love that that fabric the colorway was called mango and i think it describes it really well because it is bright yellow but it's quite orangey but it's not orange it's mango <laughs> so i love this jumper i wore it on my birthday i had plans to make myself a birthday dress but a big cozy jumper seemed more appropriate for um a lockdown 30th my my 30th birthday was actually on the first day of the second lockdown in the uk um on bonfire night so um yeah it was quite nice to have something cozy to cuddle up in and eat cake <laughs> which is what we did and um, so they're the four jumpers that I made and um, they kind of fulfilled a really nice quick you know I can sew up one of these raglan jumpers in half an hour once I've got it cut out and that was what I really needed at the time that I was most busy with sorting out the crowdfunder orders and um, I was on the phone to printers and cutting <laughs> hundreds of meters of fabric into bias binding and uh, yeah I really needed some something nice and quick that I could wear and be cozy in and, and just feel like really satisfied <laughs> that I'd done it and um, so they really fulfilled a, like a sewing need for me at that time which was good and um, then I went on to sew some pajama bottoms because also everything needs to be comfy and cozy at the minute and um, I mentioned that I had made the Kokowawa crafts I, I always find it really hard to say Kokowawa crafts I always feel like I'm trailing off at the end and um, Kokowawa crafts coconut pjs so I have a video already talking about the top of those pjs which I wear not as pjs <laughs> Um, but as uh, a t a, just a day top it's got a gathered neckline um, and I, I have a couple of versions of that but also I've been wanting to make these pajama bottoms for a little while because I've actually only ever made one pair of pajama bottoms and they weren't very good <laughs> so I kind of wanted to correct that and actually I want to take apart those pajama bottoms that I made and I'm hoping I'll have enough fabric to um, recut a pajama pattern that I know works um, because the fabric is amazing there um, it came from Joanne's when I was in the States last, no last November two Novembers ago <laughs> um, in, in 2019 and um, it's a brush cotton with like really really bright animals all over it so I would like to recut that at some point but I made um, a pair a stripy pair from one side of a duvet cover that my friend um, sent to me a uh, brush cotton absolutely beautiful really lovely and soft and um, one side was cream with um 
red and blue stripes and the other side is a check of all of those colours which I, I'm kind of waving at down here because it's in my pile to make another pair of pyjama bottoms but I just haven't cut them yet. Now I played around with stripes a little bit on this, um, not really intentionally um, but I ran out of, well I didn't run out of fabric, I, I laid out all the pattern pieces and I, I knew I wasn't going to have enough unless I made one of the front legs or the back legs but I chose the front legs um, the other way around so I've got one leg where the stripes are par uh, parallel. <laughs> one leg where the stripes are vertical and one leg where the stripes are horizontal and I absolutely love them and um, these have already got lots of wear and um, as I mentioned in my rose shorts vlog I want to actually make a pair of rose shorts into pyjama bottoms because I think that the flat front might suit me better or might be more comfortable but I'm um, really happy with the coconut um pajama bottoms i also made a pair of pajama shorts because sometimes i like to keep my thick tights on from where i've had my dress on for the day for example and just pull on a pair of shorts um for pjs and thick socks or slippers so i also made the pair of that i don't I, ha I do have a picture of these shorts i haven't put them out on instagram because i don't really like the picture but i'm <laughs> gonna pop them in here they're made from uh chips made from chips they have a chips print on them they're a brush cotton and um yeah they're again they're, they're super cozy and get lots of wear i just can't i really want to take a picture like a pro a match your snack picture i don't know if you guys have been following along with um joy from pink coat club who last year put up a match your match your snacks uh post because she had party ring pajamas i think um, and she posed with party rings but it's really hard to pose with chips <laughs> it's a sentence i never thought i'd say anyway um moving swiftly on i have another brush cotton from the village haberdashery which is again very much a child's novelty um pajama print it is monkeys in space with bananas and moons and uh, i'm gonna make that into a full length pair of pajama bottoms as well because actually I just would like some more pyjama bottoms in my life and uh, yeah it's time I made some so here we go um so that's all of my like simple basics I'm gonna go back earlier slightly now um to just before my little YouTube break when as well as making some simple gathered skirts I also made myself another Misty Cami hack with a fitted bodice and a, a gathered skirt out of a beautiful beautiful ruby star society viscose which is bright blue with um, moons and cats because apparently moons and animals are my thing um and i bought some of this fabric from beetle and fred in um i can't remember where they, where they are in in new york but upstate new york um when i visited my friend last year and when i got home i realized i didn't really have enough for what i wanted to do so i bought some more from I think flip flop fabric shop or it might have been fabric hq um but yeah i i love this dress i it hasn't got as much wear as i would like it to have yet um in a similar vein to the other misty cami hack dress that i made in the in the summer in the no it must have been like april may out of the beautiful clark and clark fabric and it's part of my resolutions my sewing resolutions um for this year is to wear some of my makes that could be seen as like quite dressy and wear them with converse and a big cardigan because they deserve wear <laughs> they're expensive fabrics they're beautiful fabrics they deserve to be worn anyway um i also before i took my youtube break i, I keep saying that like i was gone for ages and everybody was you know panicked <laughs> I also in the summer but I hadn't sh shared this with you I made the um, Jennifer Lauren handmade willow coat so I've made two willow coats this year different pattern companies um, but yeah I made the willow coat it's a wrap kind of shawl collar um, coat which I so I'm doing some some fit work for Jennifer Lauren handmade at the minute and so I made this in the summer. It was like literally 34 degrees and I was cutting on the floor a giant wool coat um, with lining. But it was released in November. Um, November? Yeah, end of November. And uh, 
some of the tester versions are absolutely amazing so do go check out um the pattern and the instagram hashtag because uh, it's a yeah it's a really lovely coat and a really nice starter coat if you want to make a coat but aren't too sure about um you know fitting of collars or um or lapels and things then this one's a nice one because it's kind of quite a big shawl coat for good for a first lined coat i think um so i made that i i really like the length of that coat it's like bum length <laughs> um it's not too long but it's not a really short coat either um i find that really short coats tend to yeah, if i've got a big jumper underneath it tends to not quite cover it all and then it's a bit uncomfortable so um yeah i really like the length of that coat and the and the fit is really nice so then i've got a couple more things two more things i think to tell you about um i made these are two hashtag pr product <laughs> ad all of that um to tell you about although i think i've already shown you the frida dress so maybe i don't need to tell you about that because yeah i told you that in the in my sewing haul video um so i'll skip past that one so i have one more thing to tell you but it is hashtag product ad all of that stuff um i made the ready to party dress from my handmade wardrobe who are it's run by the same ladies who run crafty so and so and um i made that up in a red cotton twill from crafty so and so as part of their blogger team and i made it so the ready to party dress it's a it's a sleeveless two neckline two skirt mix and match dress pattern um that has either a big flared like dramatic skirt or a petal skirt or i think it's called a petal wrap pencil or it might be called a wrap pencil skirt but it's like a petal skirt um and also a sweetheart neckline or a scoop neckline and on the back it says one of the recommended fabric could be needle cord and i could not get the idea out of my head of like a pinafore style um petal skirt skirt dress <laughs> that was quite hard to say um so i made one and yeah i'm really pleased with that i think there might be a couple of changes i might make to the next one but um i yeah i i'm really pleased with that it's quite a festively red dress um which i'm i'm definitely gonna i'm definitely gonna make more of that skirt i might use the montrose bodice um and and that skirt because i think that might work quite nicely as a different skirt to add to the montrose bodice which i'm just going to make loads of <laughs> there you go that's what i was up to in the last third quarter of 2020 um i will update you on my festive sewing plans um after i've done this little roundup of the other makes of, of the end of 2020 and on my resolutions um because i have actually made really good progress and i'm quite keen to show um what what i've been up to um yeah i'm quite excited actually so i hope that that was interesting and i am sorry that it's taken me so long to share some of these makes with you but uh thank you so much for watching and until next time bye <laughs>